vibrant and exciting and we're moving forward, this is a great day. It's a great day to have a press conference, even if the rain's out here, we bring sunshine in here with all the exciting events that we got planned. Uh, as uh, for those who may be doing tapings and things, I'm Mayor Mike Beamish, and it's my 13th year of uh, serving as the uh, Detroit uh, Mayor of this great community, and it's exciting times for me. I hope everybody had an opportunity to pick up a, a tip sheet, which is more of a calendar of events. I'm going to highlight a few of those events as we go through, so if you want to make notes uh, on your uh, your sheet, that's your handout to take with you. Uh, first of all, i got to give some credits, and there are a lot of credits due here. In fact, many of the people are here as partners in this great venture that we have gotten and are moving forward with, with the river uh, project, riverfront project. But first of all, i got to give uh, uh, certainly a, a Credit to our Troy City Council. Mrs. Baker is president of the council, and she's here, and other members are here. But uh, they had the uh, foresight and the vision to support a program that I think will be uh, wonderful as an economic driver in the economic toolbox here in Troy, Ohio, for the future years. Uh, so I certainly want to tell you they took risks and they believed in us and we're moving forward. But I also, uh, in, in addition to the uh, Troy City Council and their support, I would also have to say our staff has been wonderful. Uh, I, I'll forget somebody, but I'm going to highlight Patrick Titterington, uh, Tom Funderburg, our directors of operations here in the city of Troy, and they have helped to move things forward, uh, as well as Troy City Council. Stan Kegley, many of you know Stan Kegley is our project engineer. You may or may not know, he also is the president of Ohio's Great Corridor along the river. And so he's promoting not only Troy as a destination, but also uh, along the river and the, the, the activities that can all uh, be, play a part in coming together and allowing people to come into this region. And it's exciting to see a natural river treasure that we have, the Great Miami uh, River, more specific Detroit. Um, and and uh, also uh, Sue Knight. A lot of people don't know, but Sue Knight is the administrative assistant, clerk of council. And without her and keeping me moving forward, uh, I want to give credit where credit is certainly due. And that is our entire staff more specific, the ones that I've mentioned. Uh, those are great. And then the supporting cast members, that's you. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, if it weren't for people to step forward, uh, and, I, and again, I don't mean to not say somebody's name, but the Troy Foundation has been a wonderful, they're here today, but they've been a wonderful, wonderful supporter of so many community projects to move this city forward, including what I have always wanted to see happen is the restoration of the lighthouse. Uh, we'll talk a little more about that in a little bit. Um, but those are the partners. Those are the people who have stepped forward. Many, many others who have said, this is a good, and I'm going to highlight some. But I'm going to forget, not forget, but I'm not going to be able to say everybody. All I'm saying is we have a community full of partnerships. I've said that for years, and I truly, in my heart, mean if it weren't for partnerships, Troy would not be in the position that Troy is in today. So a big thank you goes out to all of you. And in our community, our community is the benefactors. Sometimes we don't see that, but we, we need to realize that every piece that we put in place provides opportunities for people of all ages to have something to enjoy in Troy, Ohio, USA. They don't have to go farther than Troy, Miami County, and in this general region to see there's a value in this area. And we don't have the mountains, we don't have the ocean, but we certainly have great river and resources and treasures right here in this Miami Valley. And so I want to say thank you to our communities for their support. Um, again, if you want to follow along, I'm going to tell you some of, and, and I've been waiting to wear this hat. This is a hat that says Treasure Island, uh, the Great Adventure <coughs> Series. So I get to wear this hat today because that's how excited I am about the, all the, 
the things that are going on. We have exciting events going on and coming in the summer of 2016. As you see, Troy is the river destination, but you notice it's the downtown connected. And that's what makes, I think, so special. I mean, we have treasures. Uh, I see Hainer Cultural Centers here in force. You know, there's just so many pieces that all play in making this a very special place. But today I want to focus on our newest venture, the Riverfront uh, Projects, in, especially uh, with the marina and the uh, Treasure Island Park. Um, I'm going to ask people if I, if I say something that fits you, if you'll just raise your hand, even if it's ever so briefly, so everybody can look around, if they have a specific question, they'll know who to go to to ask for that specific uh, uh, piece of, of our great puzzle that we have to offer. So I will ask the individuals who have made a commitment, uh, and I think every one of you could answer your, raise your hand to this, I've made a commitment of your time, your support, your um, expertise, or in many cases, your treasure. Uh, you have made a in financial investment. Uh, I bet all of you could raise your hand in some, if I were to ask you to, if you're one of those, those four people. But I, I am happy today to talk about two things that has been exciting, probably the most asked question to me uh, since this whole project started. Who's going to the marina building? And what restaurant's going? And what's going to be attached to that restaurant that might have some river excitement to it? I've got both people here today that's going to make that happen. And uh, first of all, if you have read the paper, you probably got a sneak preview. If you haven't, uh, I'm happy to announce that we do have a restaurant here. And uh, Larry Smith is the president. Raise your hand, Ray. Larry, I'm asking you. And his compadre right next door is Ron Smith. And I want to tell you, if I could tell you, everybody knows Larry Smith as a wonderful landscaper in this community. He's done great things. Operation Cloverleaf, just one example. The courthouse is another example. We can just keep going on and on. But he has seen the potential of the riverfront and the marina. And, and we had many uh, project plans brought forward to, uh, to want to be a part of the marina. But Larry and Ron uh, have great expertise. Uh, if you don't know uh, Ron Smith, uh, I've had the pleasure to go to his restaurant in Hawaii. He had a pr prestigious restaurant, and he's coming back to his home city of Troy, uh, and he will be the executive chef of Smith's Boathouse Restaurant. And uh, I, raise your hand, guys. I want to make sure they all see you. <laughs> Larry Lapp is the president of their LLC, uh, and Ron will be the uh, executive chef. And I will guarantee you they all have restaurant experience in their background. And Ron, uh, having been there on, uh, I think it's Maui, isn't it? Was it Maui, Ron? Uh, it, it, yeah, let me just tell you, he's dedicated to making a successful uh, uh, restaurant along the river. And a lot of his cuisine, I think you'll find to be, ex I know you'll find to be exceptional. And they just, uh, the CIC, the Community Investment Corporation, has supported them and a future in the lease for down the road for many years to come. And we wish them nothing but the greatest success. I'm excited, they know I'm excited about that possibility as the marina uh, will become an icon of the Treasure Island Park. But let's take one step next to that and what, what do you want on the river? You want people. And we have a canoe kayak delivery right down the street from us who who Chris Jackson, raise your hand Chris, Chris Jackson has stepped forward. He's been excited about this project for a long time, waiting to see how it's going to unfold. And he is excited to be a partner with Smiths uh, and working together to connect the restaurant business with the canoe, kayak delivery business. And uh, uh, I've already heard some of the ideas being generated, uh, but uh, I know Chris Jackson, 
Uh, if, you, if you know of him, Adventures on the Great Miami and Chip City, it's a success. He's uh, really excited about being a part of the toy community and being right there at the Treasure Island Park. We have two cornerstone uh, successful uh, ventures that are coming, and I wanted to start off by saying that. But that's not all, folks. Uh, we have tried to enhance what we already have in our downtown. We have great cooperation with our concert series that go on, and, and we have said we want to continue that in Crowley Plaza, grow it with activities there, but we want to take those activities and also enhance it. So if you're living in the Miami Valley, you can come to Troy about any day of the week and find something to do this summer. It's that exciting when we take Treasure Island Park and we build some of the activities. And I want to highlight, I've already shared our two cornerstone announcements today with the uh, Smith's uh, Boathouse Restaurant and the uh, uh, Ventures on the Great Miami with uh, Chris Jackson. But the summer of uh, in the fall of 2016 is going to have some exciting activities, folks. Uh, it, it's Treasure Island Park. And we have uh, new ventures. We have our amphitheater. We have our shelter house. We've already had uh, some other features, our walkways. Uh, we have some other ideas to keep enhancing that. We have the river activities. But it's going to be an exciting time. And let me just share a few of those, uh, starting on June 12th. June 12th will be our actual dedication day. And that's where we invite you, the public, to come out, take a walk around, see what's going on, uh, take some walkthroughs. Um, but uh, we're also going to have a dedication ceremony. We'll do the Lighthouse dedication. Raise your hand there, Troy Foundation. There it goes real quick. They're so fond of stuff. So we're going to dedicate that Lighthouse along with the whole park in general. We'll have a three o'clock dedication. And then we'll open it up to the public. We have entertainment. I've already uh, spoke to uh, Kathy McIntosh, who everybody knows is our Troy High School uh, music director. Uh, they'll be there to uh, play a few numbers, including National Anthem to kick us off. And then also I've uh, had some, uh, I'm very pleased to say, Rum River Blend that many of us know as local talent here is also very proud to be a partner uh, on that uh, June 12th day. So we will follow that uh, with tours, um, the excitement of that. Uh, we're even thinking the uh, Dayton Canoe Club is the, contacted us, and they have what they call war canoes, big canoes. And uh, that might be something of an exciting thing to see them coming down the river as well as a kickoff for the activity. I mentioned Kathy McIntosh. Many of you know Bill and Kathy McIntosh head up the uh, Troy Civic Band. One of the concerns that the Troy Civic Band has had in the past is sound, noise, trains, trucks, motorcycles down on Crowley Plaza. We can't close off the entire uh, quadrants uh, for their, uh, their performances, but yet they are professionals. And uh, when we had the amphitheater installed down at Treasure Island Park, it uh, became the obvious place for the home of the Troy Civic Band. They will have a concert on Crowley Plaza because uh, they want to still have some, some uh, time around Memorial Day. But they have concerts planned in J uh, July. In fact, they have two concerts. They're going to do a, sal a salute to Count Basie on uh, uh, July 10th. I think it's on your program there. If it's not, write it down. July 17th, they're going to come by and they're going to do, uh, it all started with a mouse. You can kind of guess what that might be by. And then in August, they're going to have a concert and they'll be talking about uh, pops along the riverside. And then uh, finishing up in September, they will have a concert called Land and Sea. Appropriate, appropriate. So that, that is the, the local talent that we're going to be bringing in for those Troy Civic Band uh, concerts. And, and again, these are free entertainment for people of all ages to come and enjoy. Um, the Troy Recreation Partner, raise your hand guys, you're back there, they're back there. They, uh, and, and Tom Kendall included, because uh, as you know, he has sponsored the River Rock concerts, have been very successful in past years. Now it's enhanced. And so uh, Tom has had a very big part to play 
as part of the whole free concert series down at Treasure Island Park. And I'm, I'm going to highlight three concerts uh, so you can check it off. June 25th. June 25th, uh, Phil Dirt presents Surf's Up. Again, you can get the theme of water. Uh, the tribute to the Beach Boys. It'll be a tribute to the Beach Boys. That'll be at 7.30 in the evening. Um, obviously, Beach Boys type concert. Uh, then July 9th, we're going to have a Stranger concert. That isn't for strangers. It's called Stranger Concert. That'll be at 7.30 as well. Uh, that's when the 80s rule. Uh, the 80 music will be featured. You'll sing along with all those songs of the 80s. Uh, probably be on stage if I understand. This is a local group. Comes out of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, they were formed in 1996. A very popular group. And they will be coming <coughs> to Treasure Island Park on July 9th. On July 23rd, that's going to be a big day. And I'm going to break it into two parts. But I'll talk about the River Rock Concert. Uh, actually, Tom Kendall... Uh, help sponsor uh, and promote, um, uh, and it's become an outstanding event, one of our cornerstone concerts, and uh, we're going to bring the Parrots of the Caribbean. They've been around before at 7.30 that night, and uh, you know, that's a Jimmy Buffett concert, so you can imagine the excitement of that, so we all have a Troyville or a Margaritaville or Something that danced the night away and played with the music there. And again, thanks to the uh, Recreation Department, Tom Kendall and Carrie and, and Ken Seiler for all that they have done to make that possible. So that's exciting. Again, free entertainment to come and enjoy uh, uh, down, down the park venue. Uh, other activities, you know, we, we've talked about the concert, the culture that we have both at Prouty Plaza now and at the uh, Treasure Island uh, Park. But, but other activities, the wellness activities, the, the river type activities, I wanna highlight a few of those. Uh, and uh, again, Chris Jackson is gonna be a part of that. Uh, June, the, June 18th, we're gonna have a canoe float. Uh, Scott Meyer, I don't think Scott's here, but it'll be sponsored by the Miami County Park District. Uh, you can register through the Miami County Park District, uh, but it's coordinated uh, to be a canoe float. Starts at 9 a.m. on June 18th, follows our dedication. On June 25th will be our first annual Great Miami 12-mile river race and fun float. I don't know how fun and 12 miles is, but we'll <laughs> have a good time. Starting at 9 o'clock, it'll start at Treasure Island Park. Uh, in here in Troy, Ohio, and end uh, with a uh, party at the Adventures on the Great Miami, I think in Tip City, correct, Chris? And again, Chris is very uh, involved in making that a very uh, wonderful event, and hopefully a beginning of a traditional event. So it's a 12-mile river race. It's open to all skill levels. It may tip over, but we could all give our hand. There'll be uh, awards for the best uh, canoe and, and best individual kayak, uh, Spirit Fun Award. Chris, is there anything else I haven't said about how the, that's going to develop? Is that okay? Or? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We have a long way to our head. A little cleanup. That's always good for the environment. Uh, but it's going to be food, music, fun. It'll be a great time. And Chris Jackson's here if you want to talk to him a little more about that. But that's June 25th. And uh, then June 26th, the Corvette Club is coming. See, we're trying to do things to, to bring things to that park that are a variety. And the Corvette Club is excited about bringing that nostalgic look of the Corvette downtown to, down to the park, the Treasure Island Park. July, that takes care of the June. And then July, we have the Troy Triathlon at 8 o'clock. It starts at 8 o'clock. This event, I know I, I saw Wade in there, but he must have waited away. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, commissioners are here. Jack Evans is here. I really appreciate it. We talk about how we're a partner. We talk about the schools. We talk about the county. We talk about the city. We talk about the region all pulling together. And you can see that as you look around the audience today, all those parties are available to us and, and supporting us. Um, the triathlon is going to include canoeing, running, and cycling. Uh, the 
sign up will be through Speedy Feet. They've done other events for us in the past. A wonderful organization, very supportive our organization for us. Um, so that that's one they'll test their skill. And then on July 17th, uh, we're going to have something for the young kids. Kids Truck Day. It, it should be a wonderful thing. Christy Quinn is going to head that project up. And this is kids of all ages. Maybe we might stay young. But uh, we're going to enjoy the op opportunity to get up and close. If you've had a young grand youngster or your own personal kiddos growing up, you know what they are fascinated with. Big things. Army trucks. Concrete mixers. Backhoes, you know, anything that is big and moves around. And uh, so they can take pho photos posing uh, on by these vehicles, you know, and the kids are going to be excited. We ask parents to be very careful with the kids on those equipments. But we are trying to also, there's big equipment been down at Treasure Island Park. It's nice to, to see that culminate in all their efforts and let the young kids get to see up close and personal what they always dream of, and that's big stuff, big trucks. So uh, that's something for young teachers. On July 23rd, we've already talked a little bit about the concert, but the 2016 uh, River Rock is also having a beach party. Beach party 2016, from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock, that covers the concert, but it also brings families together to join in at Treasure Island Park uh, for the beach party along the Great Miami River. Uh, it'll it'll uh, start at 3 o'clock. There'll be activities for those aged young, 3 uh, through 10. Parents dress them up so they can get, all get wet. That's the idea. And the big uh, kahuna challenge for 16-year-olds. I think that's going to be exciting. I don't know how that will unfold. And older, 16 or older. Uh, with the paddleboard uh, given to, as the grand prize, entries will be limited, of course. Food trucks are going to be available on that day. Uh, rental of canoes and kayaks. We're going to put another plug there. That's a great opportunity to get on the river. Uh, going to be available throughout the day. Uh, then, of course, the grand finale is the River Rock concert uh, with the Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, there'll be uh, even, I think, the war boats are going to be there. So there'll be like dueling war boats competitions. So that'll also be from the Dayton Canoe Club. It's wonderful to see that regional partnership that I've shared with you. Uh, so it should be a fun-filled day, a fun-filled afternoon and an evening for the entire family to come together. Then in August, uh, we're going to have Kim's here uh, and also uh, Carrie Slater's here. Together, they're forming a, a night volleyball tournament. That in itself is unique. Night volleyball tournament starts at 8 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what the time is. Uh, it's not your everyday volleyball tournament. The event will have uh, black lights, a DJ, uh, food, prizes, uh, fun, and more. Uh, and uh, certainly, I'd say ask Kim or Carrie, they can give you a little more information. But that should be a wonderful opportunity, too, for us that, uh, uh, well, I used to play a lot of volleyball. Uh, maybe get a little too old for that, but Kim knows uh, it's a fun time. She's still young to do this thing. August 20th, another canoe float, uh, River Appreciation Day. It's going to start at 9 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be, again, sponsored by the Miami County Park District. They'll have more registration of information out on that, but River Appreciation Day will, and I, I hope everybody will, won't take this as bad, a fish shocking by the U.S., Department of Fish and Wildlife. That's not a bad thing, folks. It just gives uh, people the, the chance to see what kind of fish we might have in that room. Um, September uh, 17th, Th this is a biggie. And Tom, if you wanna add anything that I don't add to this, this is very, uh, this is a, more than just a local event. This event has taken place wide, statewide. It's a big one. We are excited to announce that Be The Match will be a 5K run and walk. It will be held at Treasure Island Park on September 17th. This event will attract somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 to 1,000 participants that are here to support and get this blood-based cancer. Um, and uh, it's an opportunity to participate. Uh, it's a wellness event. 
run, walk, but you're supporting an excellent cause. And if you uh, want to talk to Tom, uh, Tom, did I cover that okay yeah. for you? Yeah, if anybody uh, has questions, just see. Yeah, them. see right. Tom, it, it is a big event. It, it strikes close to home. And it's one that I know we've worked very hard to bring. This is not a local event. This is a big uh, statewide event that's coming to Treasure Island <coughs> Park. Um, and so I hope people will um, support that. Um, something that's been with us in previous years, but with the construction wasn't here last year, the championship of the National Association. Now get that, I said the championship of the National Association of Professional River Anglers is selected Troy and Treasure Island to be the host. Uh, it, they see it as an ideal location. As I said before, they've been here before. This is a national competition, and uh, they will be here October 9th. I hope you're getting the idea that this is an action-packed park. This is not your standard just you know, come and go. We're really trying to promote the activities along the river. And uh, they love it. Uh, so the anglers are going to be here again after a little hiatus. They're coming back uh, to participate. They like the area. They like Treasure Island. And they like the Great Miami River. On October 15th, we're getting close to Halloween now, folks. It's now time for the ghost stories. The ghost stories. And so from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at night, uh, with that Halloween approaching, uh, who doesn't love a good ghost story? You know? And if we got a good person to tell it, it makes it even better. Sean DeNoyer uh, is going to uh, be our ghost storyteller, and uh, that will take place uh, out at the uh, island, on the island. So hopefully, even in October, you'll come and enjoy activities that are taking place. You know, and, and we're just getting started, folks. This is something we want to work in conjunction with a lot of partners. And we hope others will see the excitement that we're doing as river, as Troy becomes a river destination along the Great Miami River. We are uh, certainly the northern hub, but Dayton is kind of our metropolitan area, and you know what's happening down along the riverscape of Dayton. Uh, Miamisburg to the south is really working hard, but I'd like to say that Troy has taken the lead in really uh, doing something that's going to be an economic driver for the region and, uh, and bring some of the uh, millennials with, them, with us that they can come and enjoy the ambiance of Troy, Ohio, USA. If you want more future updates, and I hope it grows, I really do, uh, you can see some of the pictures here to give you a little uh, taste of what we see happening and what the history was, but uh, you can always go to www.troyohio.gov and get a link to uh, more activities uh, that are going to be taking place. So uh, that's kind of uh, where we are at this point in time. I was just so excited to be able to announce the marina uh, restaurant business with the Smiths uh, Boathouse Restaurant. I was equally as excited uh, with the uh, adventures on the Great Miami coming to Troy and, and at the, uh, the Treasure Island Park with Chris Jackson and, and the efforts that He's been excited, to, and then uh, I've already, I already—I know I'll miss somebody. But let me just tell you, uh, I miss the auditor too, John Frigge. But you know, they're the ones that put packages together, say, "Can we do this? Do we have the capacity to do this? Can we make things happen?" Well, we have. And what I think you could understand is, if you look at that list, already you're seeing one of the goals that I think. Council, myself especially, has always tried to have recreation and culture a part of Troy and to enhance that for people of all ages. I hope you will join me in saying that there is something there for the young and the older alike to come together and enjoy the fellowship and the time that they can spend. And think of all the impact that that has in terms of small business and the impact that it does have with restaurants and hotels and, and small downtown business. <coughs> Everything gains by having events and activities that everybody can enjoy. So I'll open it up for uh, any specific questions. I hope uh, Stan Cagley hasn't left. He's my right-hand man. 
Uh, he knows, there he is back there. And he uh, does a lot of the technical updates that he gives to me. But uh, I'm going to start. Um, Ron, Larry, is, is there anything you want to add that I haven't added already that you'd like to, to put in, in place? You're excited, I know. Now, there, Ron is about like a kid in a toy store. He can't wait to get started. I will just say that we are excited. And uh, I'll start by saying it wasn't something we were really looking for to do when we started this. But when we got involved with seeing what they did to this building and this area, it's kind of a no-brainer in my mind. Uh, there's no question it's going to be successful. I told the mayor yesterday when he called and said the lease was approved, I said, that's great. You just got to come and eat there and join us. But we're looking forward to it. Uh, as far as open, <clears throat> we can't say for sure yet. This was just settled yesterday. So uh, we hope to be open as soon as we can be open. Late summer. Late summer, hopefully, early fall. Sooner if we can be. Well, when you have a nationally acclaimed uh, executive chef and you have somebody that has the respect of our community in Larry, it, it, it's got to be successful. And I know we talked about quality. We, we're not going to open that until we really feel good. But they're already putting investment into that, uh, that the marina building. And, of course, the city has put an investment. It's really opened up. We can't wait for you to take a, a little tour to see how the legacy of the Hobart family is alive and well, and how that building many of us have been in has now opened up, and they're wanting to take the whole building along with working with Chris Jackson here and, and just make a great partnership. So, Chris, I'm going to give you a chance. Is there anything I haven't said that you would like to add? Well, thank you, Mary. I think you covered it pretty well today. I wanted to say we're trying to bring the Hubbard Bat Rally back to Troy uh, yeah. soon. So that's kind of exciting for us. But some people like those hovercrafts, so a lot of exciting things happen. Thanks for the opportunity. You know, we uh, used to be the, North, the hub of the North American hovercraft uh, event here on the banks of uh, the Great Miami, uh, and that, that is a goal to bring back that. In fact, uh, I had the opportunity and privilege to be a part of the uh, committee that brought the world hovercraft uh, to Troy, Ohio, uh, years ago. So it would be an exciting add-on. Stay tuned. I met Mr. Brownlee yesterday. Huh? He's excited. Keep those folks yeah. alive. So we'll see. We're trying to keep our fingers out there and bring others into the fold. So it's exciting. Uh, any other questions? Anything somebody maybe I didn't clarify or I need to clarify <coughs> that you would like to ask? You know the partners are here. So if you have specifics, they could answer those specifics. It's an exciting time for Troy, Ohio, folks. You know, with our thriving, vibrant downtown, and you compare, uh, compare that with the river, and you connect the river to our park system, and you know that whole recreational corridor that runs all the way from Duke Park North all the way down from, through Miami Shores. It, it, it's, just a, it's just a lot of activity that we can keep promoting and growing. So, uh, I, I want to thank you. Yeah, question. Not really a question. Okay. I wanted to throw in my little bit here. Um, the white building right across the street there. Um, I don't have my pointer, but right here. I see. We purchased this in February. We have bicycle shops. That's right. And we've talked about that possibility. Think about that, folks. We have a uh, like to partner. And however we can. You know, we've been trying to do ride shares. We want to get people on the recreational trail system, either walking or riding. Uh, a bike share would be a wonderful opportunity. Uh, their business is right across the street of uh, the opening to Treasure Island Park. Great opportunity for, uh, for them. And we also have a downtown bike, uh, bike store. If they could put their heads together, think of the great things that could happen in terms of uh, bike-friendly transportation, and I will throw this out, we are a bright, bike friendly community. We are bronze medal status, and hopefully soon, someday, to be a silver status. And things like this partnership would be a wonderful add-on. Anybody else? Patrick. Patrick. A, a week before the schedule, is Treasure Island involved in the Strawberry Festival at all? 
And where do I get a hat? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. This was given to me. Uh, I, I, I think these are collector's items, uh, Stan. Uh, it was given to me uh, as part of a River Summit uh, presentation. But uh, to answer your question, right now, the Troy Strawberry Festival is connected with downtown in the levee and, of course, the stadium. It's kind of centered in that area. Uh, but who knows what will happen down the road once this uh, – we think we got a lot of activities going, and it could grow. Uh, I will tell Pat and all of you, in the past uh, festival, and I've had the opportunity, as Tom has, to chair the Troy Strawberry Festival. In the past, they've had the Nomads, which is an RV-type flood. They used to come down to the Treasure Island Park, and they would house their vehicles there, have the parties there, and then go walk to the festival site on the levee. Many of you are nodding your heads, you remember that. Uh, who knows, that could also be a, a, a thing of the future, of the future, but not for this, this year. Any other questions? These are good. I mean, uh, could you tell them just a little, like a kid in a toy store, I'm excited. This has been something that I believe that we needed and we're moving forward, and I can thank all those partners, every one of you who have contributed in some way make this possible. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Stan, is there anything as the president of the higher border that I haven't covered? No, sir, I think you covered it all. I covered it all? <laughs> thank you. Thanks for attending. Uh, hopefully it's not raining too bad out there. You can all get back safely. Thank you very much.